Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I have been a long time user of SyncThing. Picture it very similar to Dropbox, where it does file synchronization, but it's open source. It is a well documented protocol. The SyncThing team has done a great job of that, and it's free. So this has been a solution I've used in a lot of different scenarios and helped out a lot of customers who go, you know, I really need these servers at different locations to synchronize this pool of data or even desktops or laptops or really any device that you need file synchronization in real time, along with revision and everything else. I'll leave links to the videos I've done previously on SyncThing. It has improved since I've done those videos, so anything that may be missing at the read through the errata, but this is a particular feature that's new that I wanted to cover that is really cool, and that is an ability to add untrusted nodes. So essentially what we're going to talk about here is the ability to synchronize multiple devices, just like you always could have sync thing, but also allow, for example, this node and this node to ha talk to a cloud node in between. Now, the problem with putting sync thing in the cloud, of course, is I don't trust that cloud provider or this cloud provider. That's a good, fair assessment, because what if someone gets access to that? Well, they would obviously have access to all the files with the previous version of sync thing. This new update in that is going to be a prerequisite is make sure we're on the right version because it doesn't show up until later versions. And this whole demo is going to be done with version 1.17.0. And with that version, it allows us to add untrusted nodes, such as this cloud demo we're doing. Now, granted, this one's not in the cloud. It's all in my lab. It's just on a different network, but the concept is the same. So we have the data actively here. And then we have the data here in an encrypted form. Now, SyncThing has always encrypted the transport layer. So the data stream between each node has always been encrypted, but the data at rest could not be encrypted because, well, then it would only sync encrypted data. So the solution sometimes might be to pre-encrypt the data and synchronize the encrypted data across, but that has its own level of inconvenience on there because now you have to go and unencrypt the data at each point. This way, we can have unencrypted data here, unencrypted data here when it's live. Still always recommend encrypting data at rest. But this node is unaware of the data in terms of anything more than it's passing through. It can see the data and we'll show you what it looks like, but it's all scrambled because the password we use to encrypt it, the cipher we're going to use, the cipher built in here, plus the password system that they've devised for this, allows it to become blind to the data, including the folder structure file name. So it's not just encrypting the contents of the data, but all the metadata. The only piece of information that is somewhat known by the untrusted node is gonna be the size of the data. At some point, you can't really hide the fact that, well, if I have 10 gigs of data, even if I encrypt it, it's still 10 gigs of blob data at that point. Uh, this node will be blind to. But either way, this is a really important step towards being able to build out an untrusted node, be able to synchronize with other people, and never have to worry about this node becoming compromised. So that's the whole purpose of this video is to show you how to set that up. Before we dive into the details of this video, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a share project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's plenty of affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, SyncThing can't get you a deal on because it's already free, so all you got to do is head over to SyncThing.net to download it. And that's where we're going to start with assuming that you've already installed SyncThing and you've already are at least running the same version as I am to make this work because this was not available in older versions. Now, just to reiterate what I said before, data is encrypted before sending. This is an important distinction. Anytime you're doing something where you want to not trust the node on the other end, you want to encrypt at the endpoint. So that is what's going to be occurring here. So we will cover how we set that up. And the transport layer, there's nothing different we need to do because as I stated before, sync thing has already always encrypted the transport so you do, it's better, of course, always to run something behind a VPN in case there's ever a problem because, you know, that way you have one more layer of encryption. But if you don't run it behind a VPN, you just want to send the protocol over the Internet. As I stated, it is encrypted, so that is an option for you. But more security is always better. All depends on the complexity of the setup. As I said, we are version 1.170 running on Linux. Uh, do not do this. Sometimes when I'm doing this, you may see an error that this is running as root. Don't run this as root. I did it for the demo because I wanted to build a couple of VMs real quick uh, for this, so I didn't bother setting up a separate user for same thing. But that's out of scope for this video. 
but just want to get those things out of the way in case you see those errors come up where it says this shouldn't be around as root because you shouldn't. Now, untrusted and trusted. So here's the Tom sync thing. And I actually am actively using this. We sync all the graphics, uh, videos, business documents. This is you know, been covered in a few other videos. I'll leave links below for my usage for sync thing and been a great tool. And we're going to add one more node to this. And the first node we're gonna add is the untrusted one. So we're gonna go here to advanced and you can implicitly say where you want the node to be or where the node is, I should say. You can use dynamic as in it changes, but for purposes of video and expediency, we're just gonna put in the address for each one. You could put in a fully qualified domain name. There's different methods of doing this, but like I said, we're just gonna be using this for expediency and we're gonna check the untrusted box under advanced and we're gonna back over to general. I'm gonna to go to our untrusted device here and go to action. And we wanna show the ID of the untrusted device. Copy the QR code is because yes, same thing does work as a phone app as well. Go back over here. There's a device name, device ID, and then we give it a device name. Do not trust this node. There we go. Pretty simple, advanced, nothing big here, just basic. We're gonna set it up and get it connected unused. Now we don't have a folder I wanna share yet. I mean, I could share all my business documents with it. That's easily possible. We're gonna build a separate folder called the data to encrypt. There's the data to encrypt. And actually I have an untrusted testing folder where I threw a little bit of data in here already. And here's that folder with all the random data. I just have some silly little things in here, some test data, some YouTube templates, just a few graphics. You can see all the file names and everything else on this computer right here, different folders. For example, my business docs, my graphics, and my studio all have to have a different folder ID from here. And we could even name it ourselves if we wanted to. Test data. Simple enough. If you want to give it its own name, as long as the name is unique to this system, you're good. All right. Sharing. We want to share this with do not trust this node. And we're gonna give it a password. Password one, two, three. Now, the level of encryption, how hard this is to crack, is going to be highly dependent on this password. So I recommend something way better than password one, two, three. Some type of you know random generated gibberish would probably be much better where you have a really high entropy level of encryption because if someone wanted to just work away at it, well, if it's password one, two, three, it's gonna get guessed fast. But nonetheless, uh, we're just gonna use this for simplicity. So we put password one, two, three. So here's the folder we're creating. Here's the location of the data. And we're sharing it with the do not trust this node and hit save. So the data to encrypt, but it's not encrypted on this machine. Do not trust this node. It's disconnected right now because we did not finish the add. So we'll hit okay. And we're gonna go ahead and add device. The way sync thing does is there's a node that you want to add and there's a back and forth that has to be accepted. First, we put in the address of it and the device ID, and then it talks to that device ID we put in, and then it asks, do you want to actually you know, accept this connection? It is a method of logging into both systems, so you can't just add a node. You have to both go back and forth. Those nodes agree to talk to each other. Important distinction on there in case you're wondering if anyone can just randomly add a node that has a public-facing IP. They cannot. You may get requests for the ad, but you have to still accept those ads. So we'll go ahead and hit save. It'll take a second. There is a pause from the time you do this to it resynchronizes. As a matter of fact, we can just go here and restart because it'll speed it up a little bit. Try to do this as much as we can in real time. Hey, there we go. Now it sees the folder. If you wait a minute, it will see it. And it wants to call it root the data to encrypt. Fair enough, we can use that name. As I said, we're running it as root, don't do that. Of sharing, doesn't matter. Versioning, don't bother because with the untrusted node, if you do any file versioning, you can't see the file name, so you don't know what you're versioning. So you, this node stores everything in single version. Uh, that's a cool feature. Same thing has to have the revision history of things, but we can do that with the unencrypted nodes. You just don't do it with these. So for now, they've left it in here. So it has the option, but like I said, it's not particularly useful. And we'll just hit save. Now we've got this node here and this node here. And once again, I'm just gonna restart it real quick because it'll get it going faster. Same thing here, restart. 
And here we go. Yeah, it's gonna give me the privileged account error. And it synchronized all the data. And I mean, all the data looks like this. So here, let's go ahead and close that. Let's switch over to the terminal and take a closer look. So if we look at the directory here, there's all the file names we can see. And uh, what do we call it? The data to encrypt. Not any folders exist in here in the unencrypted, but the way SyncThing handles the encryption is by going through and encrypting all of the folder names, well, all the file names into a series of folders. This is one more piece of metadata that they're obscuring. So if we make a directory, and then uh, what else should we do? Vim s.txt data 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 go back over here and uh yep it added another folder but it did not tell me that there's still only one folder but for each of these there's just another subfolder created, but it does not give you any hint that testing123 was created. Let's dive a little bit deeper here and let's modify a file. Let's modify test.txt. Some more test data. And then we write that file out. And if we look back over here, and we're going to go through recent changes. Unknown file. It's all it tells me is something got updated. Oh, there's that file. It took a second. And now it's updated this one. So let's actually go in the folder and see what this looks like. So go here. And there's that test file. And we can see, like I said, one piece of information we have is that it's small, but that's it. So if we were to look at that file, It's just gibberish. There's nothing in here to really indicate anything about the file for us to extract any knowledge or data from it. It's just all gibberish here, which is exactly what you want. So the untrusted node is blind to it. Now, to finish this demo, let's add another node that's trusted. This way, we've encrypted it here. We want this to talk to this, but not directly, because let's say they're behind two spots and we want them to talk to this common untrusted node, but then have unencrypted communication with it. All right, let's go back over here then. And this is a trusted sync thing versus our untrusted one. So this is just a separate system I set up. Same thing, we're gonna implicitly tell it to connect to the untrusted node. Go back over here to general. Actions show ID, copy, paste, do not trust this node. There we go. We can check the untrusted box. It doesn't really matter because you'll see in the next step, it doesn't matter as much on this side because it's already an untrusted node and declared that way. And there's nothing to share with it because we want to be on the receiving end. So we don't need to do anything on this other than talk to this device. So there we go. Just to speed things up, we'll do action restart. All right, the device trusted sync thing wants to talk. So let's go ahead and hit add device. Device name trusted sync thing, sounds good. Hit save. All right, now we need to share this folder. This is that encrypted folder on this system, but the goal is to get it talking to the other system and allow for the decryption. So let's go over here. And in order to get the folder to share, we're going to click edit. We'll just go to sharing. And the data here is encrypted. So there's nothing we have to do other than share this folder. So let's go ahead and save and it's going to share it with your, our trusted device over here. And the trusted device is now going to get a prompt from the untrusted device that it would like to share a folder. This is the part where the password needs to be saved. We can't put the password in over here or defeat the purpose of the untrusted sync thing. You want to only ever have the password on each node where the decryption is occurring. So now we can go here. If untrusted was the password, password one, two, three. So make sure I type that right. Cool. This is the do not trust this node. It's sharing a file with us and it's called password one, two, three. That's the decryption key. Now, this particular node, which for our diagram is this one right here, I can create a file on my computer and our 
trusted node over here can see it, but our untrusted node in between cannot. So let's go ahead one more time. Make sure it's up to date. This is our trusted one, recent changes, and of course it can see all the different files. Let's go back over to the command prompt. And if we go over here, we see we have a folder called the data to encrypt. Editing from the other trusted node. So there we've edited the test.txt file, easy enough. And if we look, there's gonna be some changes. It'll take a second to synchronize. Let's actually go here. What are the recent changes? Unknown file modified. That's it. Unknown file. It's what much data as we have over here. If we look at recent changes here, hey, test.txt was modified by this particular device. We even have the device history for each one. So this one's uncreatively named Tom's being my computer. The file was modified last on this particular device. And so we go back over to the command prompt and editing from the other trusted nodes, some more data to test. Now, I do talk a little bit, you can read through file conflict resolution. That is something that it is dealt with in case you're wondering because I have both files open. Uh, there is methods to deal with it. Just goes out of scope of this video. Mostly I really wanted to cover setting up these untrusted nodes and being able to see that you can easily add now a cloud server to it. This is just a really great feature. I'm really excited about this particular enhancement to sync thing because this has been a common hang up when people go, I really like to use it but I don't want to put a intermediary cloud server in there, which would be really convenient, but then really potential risky if you have files that are more personal in nature and you wanna keep them private and you're worried about the cloud server being attacked. So I'll leave links to the sync thing documentation. I don't think they have it fully updated with exactly how to do this. This was one of the reasons I made the video because I wanna get more people doing this. This is a fairly new feature. And in the documentation, they do have a warning that it's considered beta, but things don't really get out of beta until more people use them, report any bugs or use case scenarios that were found that cause issues. Uh, that's one of the reasons I encourage you know, using it. Of course, you know, back up all your data. Don't just trust the system, et cetera. It's, you know, still going through a vetting process. So here's the documentation they have. And I wanted to comment too on how they store the password. So this password itself is not hashed. It is still stored in your config.xml file. And let's go over here. So we are syncing for each user under the home drive stores dot config slash sync thing, then config.xml. And then here is that password. So there's that folder we named test data, the data to encrypt, where that location is, and here is the encryption password. So it's obviously really important, especially if you're using a high entropy password to back this up, but this is where you would be able to access that information if you needed to. So you back up the config on each of the trusted nodes, the untrusted node, doesn't have this information, so it can't decrypt it. So if in the event that a untrusted node was compromised, this information is not there. This is only existing. This is how the pre-encryption occurs within the trusted nodes. And of course, they got some of the other details about this, so you can read through it. But like I said, I'm excited about this. It's a cool feature that I'm really excited they added to the system and uh, definitely looking forward to testing with it and, you know, setting up a few extra nodes and seeing if there's any problems with it, reporting back. And uh, this is something else to make me like sync thing even more. And I'll leave links to all my other sync thing videos. And in case I didn't mention earlier, yes, this supports Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD, lots of uh, different platforms are supported. Sync thing's a great tool for all those different platforms and including uh, running it on TrueNAS. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. 
Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.